Hi, I'm Jerry Walter, and welcome to Community Forum. We're live here in Canton on Rhonda Drive. Tonight, we have with us from the Canton Historical Society, Joan Palmer and Diane Wilson. Diane is not with the Historical Society, but she has been involved greatly in the past four years, Diane? Yes. Writing a book called Cornerstones, and it's all about the history of Canton families. Is that right? That's right. Welcome Over 150 to the families. Listed in, it's a good sized book. <laughs> uh, that just recently was, was released. Yes, just this past Saturday. Okay, now, the book, I want to get right into the book, okay? We've got a little format here, but I want to get right into the book <laughs> because I'm excited about it. Um, the first time that I heard about the book, I, I was given the impression that it was a history of Canton itself. Now, is, is that wrong, or is it just the family histories? Well, it is basically a history of the families, but the families are so tied into the history of the township that that makes it a history of Canton. Okay. And also with us, we have, let me get and introduce Joan Palmer, and you are a member of the Canton Historical Society. Hi, Joan. Welcome Hi. to the show. Now, we're going to jump right into our itinerary here. Okay. Um, the Canton Historical Society is an organization. It's not just a fly-by-night club. You have officers, and what can you tell me about that? Well, it's a seven-member uh, board, and the president is Telly Schultz, and the vice president, Bonnie Bird, secretary, Melissa McLaughlin, and treasurer, Roy Schultz and three trustees, Frank McMurray, Flossie Tondon, Dorothy West, and Dorothy West is also the museum director. Yeah, we're going to talk about the museum and, and how, the, how the, the society and the committee and the museum, all, they're, they're all like one, but they're not really the same. Is that right? Okay. Um, now, all these positions that you mentioned, now they're all volunteers, is that correct? All volunteers. All for... To save the history of Canton, to preserve the um, the old, and uh, they have many fundraisers. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have some fundraisers coming up, I understand, with a calendar. We have a new calendar. Last year was the first year that the Historical Society uh, put out a calendar, and it's a big project. Uh -huh. Did it go over very well? I think so. I think it went over well. Good. And no. this year we're putting out the second one. Uh -huh. um, it takes about ten thousand dollars to put out the calendar. They're mailed to every land owner uh -huh. or homeowner in uh, Canton Township, and they're now they're they're for just sale. Also. Okay, they're for sale. But now, now you mail them out. Now, is there a response card if people want to send in donations or? Not with the calendar, uh -huh. but that's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> 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 okay. Um, the roots of Canton Historical Society and how it began. That I think would be partially in your book, wouldn't it, Diane? Well, it is somewhat, but I think Joan could give you more information on it. Well, it started, and I, I really can't tell you how many years ago. Okay. But it started, uh, the first meeting was held in the home of uh, Ed and Mary Hoke, who live on uh, Can Canton Center Road, right across from Myers. And um, they held meetings for several years, and then they got the Canton Center School. Now, are they in the book? Yes. Okay. <laughs> many, many hoaxes are in the yes. book. <laughs> There's more than one. More than one hoax family. Uh -huh. So it's been been around quite a while. Okay, the the um what is the primary purpose of the historical society? And I stress society because we're gonna get into the differences between the society and the committee. 
good one. I, to preserve the history of Canton. Um, okay. Really, that's what they're doing. Is that makes sense. Okay. Um, now, the society, it, okay, we've got the historical society, and we've also got the historical museum. Now, who runs the museum? Is it the society? Well, the society runs the museum. Okay, now I understand there is a paid employee at the museum. Is that right? A the director, Dorothy yeah. West, yeah, is the director. Okay. She is also a trustee of the Canton Historical Society. Okay. I believe she's also on the Historical Commission. Okay, so here we which go. Which is a branch of Canton Township government. Okay. And they, um, they do different things in the society. They're trying to save history, too, uh -huh. Canton's history. Um, they got grant money to uh, purchase the Cherry Hill School and to renovate that. They just purchased some property. We, they hope to um, save one of the old houses um, to move to that property. Uh -huh. uh, they're doing the same thing the historical society is doing. Only that's the township. Okay, so where the historical society is just members who pay a, a nominal membership fee uh -huh. and, uh, so they're the all museum. working together but they're just different branches but they're different branches okay um fundraisers we talked about the calendars uh twenty thousand it says here twenty thousand are printed uh ten thousand dollars needed to print it right uh mail to the residents and uh like you might want to send a response card on the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Any way to get new members. And you're always looking for new members. Always looking for new members. I'd like to remind you, with that note, we are live. Uh, feel free to call in. Our phone number here is 459-7391. We've got somebody in the control room. We'll answer your, your, your call and uh, relay the question out here. And if we can answer it, we'll answer it. And if you want to leave your phone number at that time, if we can't answer it, can we get them an answer? Sure, we'll get them an answer. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the book, okay? Who started the project? Well, I was not involved in the beginning of the project. I was commissioned by the Historical Society to write it, but I have heard Joan talk about one specific event where the idea really came up. It was a, a party for Phil Dingledy at his son's house. And Tilly Schultz and I were sitting at a picnic table eating, and we started talking about this and started talking about how we had to pre somehow had to preserve the history of Canton. And for the first hundred years of Canton, it was just families. There was no big or small city. Uh -huh. It was just a farming community with lots of families and, and we thought this should be preserved. Okay, do you so know... So from that point <laughs> we ended up Talking hiring about. Diane uh -huh. to be the author and to write a book about Now are you um, by trade a writer or is this something you... you yes, I'm a writer. This is the second book that I've written. I've also written co-authored a history of Van Buren Township where I live. That's how I first became involved in writing local history. Okay, uh, you say back about a hundred years. Let me ask you, I don't know. No, no, the first hundred years. Okay, the first hundred years. Township. Let me ask you a question. When was Canton actually established? It was formally established as a township in 1834, but it was first settled in 1825. Wow. <laughs> now, does your book go back that far yes. and cover Yes, it the starts with the original land grants, the very first pioneers to arrive. Wow, that sounds interesting. Um, how, how, did you, how did you go about gathering 
all the necessary information? Well, I did quite a bit of research in um, local museums, beginning, of course, with the Canton Museum, mm -hmm. and they have quite a good collection of old photographs and old scrapbooks. I started going through those. Then I also did a lot of information in museums that surround Canton because Canton residents tended to gravitate into Ypsilanti and into Plymouth and into Wayne. So I did research in all those museums. Uh, I also did some investigation in the Michigan Historical Collections, which are located at the Bentley Library on the campus of the University of Michigan. And I also did some research in the Burton Historical Collections, which are part of the Detroit Public Library. Okay, so you really had your work cut out. It was a lot of work. A that's why it took so long. <laughs> now, it's four years in the making. Yes. Now, yes. back up just a minute. Speaking of the museum, we have on display here, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about it later, we have on display here some of the artifacts from the Canton Museum, which is on Canton Center right next to the Township Hall. Right. And uh, I was in there the other day, and and uh, our, our hit me if I make a snide remark, but it really seems kind of small. Well, the museum is an old one-room schoolhouse. It was the Canton Center okay. School, okay. and it's a one-room school. That uh, they were small. That makes sense now. Cause I, I walked in there when when I when we came down to to uh, videotape Saturday mm -hmm. for for the uh, release of the book. I, I walked in there and you know it's stacked to the ceiling with with stuff and. and Wow, small museum, you know, mm -hmm. but that um, yeah, makes sense. That it was mm -hmm. the the building itself is part of Canton history. Then, yeah. okay. Now, your information that you got from you know the different libraries and the different books and the different sources, did you have to verify that at all, or did you t just take it as you know? Well, I checked different sources against each other, and that okay. helped a lot with the verification. Good. And. Uh, the research that I did in museums and libraries was just a starting point. The main research I did was through families themselves. They shared with me uh, information they had gathered on their genealogies. They went back through old family records and pulled out wedding licenses and baptismal certificates wow. and went through their attics and their basements and building family trees and yes. so on. Yes. And usually in most families there will be one person who is uh, an amateur <laughs> genealogist who okay, will become genealogy. very yeah. involved in this kind of thing and listen to their grandparents while they were growing up and and they saved these little tidbits of information. And people were very generous in sharing them with us and That's passing great. them on That's to great. us. Yeah. They, um, they also shared their pictures, which uh, are real treasures to yeah, every fact, family. Yeah, flip, let me see. There is a lot The of, book is full the of The book pictures. is just filled. Where are you at? Camera, Kelly, can you get this here? The book is just filled with with pictures, and that that's great. That's great. It's not just a, a book of of this is who it was and this is where they lived and you know there's there's pictures involved and, and that's it's a big really, variety that's of pictures. Really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pictures of houses that don't exist anymore, um, stores that uh, don't exist anymore, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, roads before they were paved, oh. how they used to look. Mm -hmm. It's no. just uh, amazing uh, that oh. we found all these treasures, and they are treasures. Now, did anybody um, other than yourself help you gather information? Um, not so much like the like like the families themselves. When you go out to a house and interview with the people, was there a second person involved? Maybe you're at one house and they're at another house gathering information. Well. Did I did a lot of the research, and Joan was my main research assistant. Okay. She just talked to hundreds of people, I'm sure, and visited many, many people, and gathered a great deal of the information. Yeah, it that's sounds like here. a lot mm -hmm. of work for just one mm -hmm. person. It was a lot of work for two persons. <laughs> okay. Um, 
what contribution did the historical society have in the book? What did they help you at all? Well, they supported the project. Um, initially, I came into Canton as a stranger, and uh -huh. I knew yeah, I understand no you're, one. You're uh, from Ypsilanti. From Van Buren Township. Van Buren, I'm sorry, Van Buren yeah. Township. And so I had to become basically ac acquainted with the community, and they were a big help in doing that. They gave me the names of lists and lists of people that I could talk to that would be good sources. And uh, they provided that kind of support all through the project. They really kept communication flowing. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, ask you, um, go ahead. Well, the board, the uh, historical board also, set the parameters for the book. The board was the one that decided that there'd be 36 chapters in the book because there are 36 sections in Canton Township. Okay. And that so it's outlined we would put the families in the sections where the first family settled is where that family would go instead of listing the families alphabetically or who came first they were put by sections the board decided that uh, the board also we started out saying you had to have lived in Canton for at least 30 years that was first uh -huh. then after a while we realized that wasn't going to work there were two that was too big too many so we decided then that uh, World War two would be a good cutoff period and we made it to uh, the early 1940s and uh, the further we got into it we knew that wasn't going to work <laughs> either because we found so many old families that, uh -huh. and it was taking too much time so then it was uh, decided that it would be the end of 1920 because in the uh, 20s in the 1920s a lot of families moved into Canton and we wanted to take in those families. Well, you still so got a lot of people was moving into Canton. <laughs> yeah. yes. The board was deciding a lot of this and they were right with it i mean um diane reported to the board every three to six months she would make a full report to the board and let them know how she was progressing and now i want to back up just a bit and you said that, that canton is divided into sections is that by um, a township it's a full township okay and in a full in a township there are 36 sections that's all over it's a land division system, how the federal government originally divided up land for sale. Okay. Each township was divided into 36 sections, and then from there they were divided into quarter sections and then down into acres, and that's how the land was sold. Okay, so then your chapters are actually, uh, chapter one would be of section one. And right, right. Great. Right. Great. Um, Tell us your thoughts on the book, Diane. Well, it was a very self-satisfying project to work on. I think that the, the historical society in sponsoring the project of this has really accomplished something monumental. It was a, a perfect time to write Canton's history because, it, as Joan says, it has been a farming community for over a hundred years and now it is almost overnight changing into becoming uh, part of suburbia, part of the Detroit Metropolitan C Complex. A ride down Fort Yeah, Dollar, sure and the uh, old families are being absorbed into the, this increasing population and the old farmhouses are disappearing as subdivisions and shopping centers are being built and that history could have been lost yeah, definitely. if they hadn't chosen this time to preserve it. Well, at least you've got it in print. That's great. Um, we're going to go to a break here, but before we go, how can people get a copy of the book? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get the oh you're ready to answer that. Uh, they can, at any time, they can go to the uh, Township Hall mm -hmm. and in the at the treasurer's office the books are for sale there and uh, they can go to the Canton 
Historical Museum. Museum. Which is open Tuesdays and Saturdays from 1 to 4. Uh, they can contact uh, Roy and Tilly Schultz, who live on Lily Road. They can contact me, and I live on Warren Road. They just have to ask almost anybody just, in Canton Mill. Well, I know that we were, we were down there Saturday with I had a camera down there and we did a little videotaping when the, when the book was released and there were a lot of people down there. They had must have been around 250 people yeah. attended. Now, how many? Let me ask you, how many books did you go through on Saturday? You had a thousand there. Well, we we ordered a thousand of the books and we've sold almost half of them on Saturday. Yes. Wow. Through Saturday. Okay, I think I think we're ready to take a look at that piece that we did up Saturday. Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind that this was was pre-recorded Saturday, and uh, Diane, you were autographing yes. the books. Yes. And uh, let's take a look at that right now, and we'll be back. When. Hi, I'm Jerry Walter reporting for What's Going On. We're here at the Canton Municipal Building with Tilly Schultz. Tilly, you're the president of the Canton Historical Society, is that right? That's right, Jerry. And we have with us today uh, Diane Wilson, who is autographing copies of her new book, Cornerstones. Right. It's What is the book about, Tilly? This is all about the history of Canton Township families. And she's done a wonderful job. We're real proud, proud of her. That's very good. How many copies of the book are here today? 20,000. 20,000 books are here yeah. today? No, that's, oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. 1,000. I'm sorry. Okay, we have 1,000 books thousand here. Books, yeah. Now, it's, it's, the books are available here today. Yes, I got mixed up with our calendars. <laughs> okay. Uh, I understand that we've got some, some fans from pretty far away. Can you tell us a little yes. about that? Right, well, alongside of you is um, Everett Burrell. Burrell, I guess he can't pronounce it. And he's came all the way from Florida. Let him tell you what part. Glad to meet you. Glad to know you. Clearwater, Florida. We've been there 15 years since my retirement from Ford Motor Company. And it's been a pleasure. And you came all the way up this weekend this for the book. This weekend, otherwise I probably wouldn't be here. My <laughs> goodness sakes. Now, you, have, you obviously worked at Ford Motor, so you have a, a history in this area. I was... Born in Superior Township, but I lived here all my childhood and adult life until I went to Detroit. Okay, and also with us we have uh, Roy Schultz. This is your husband. Right. And he is the treasurer for the... Canton Historical Canton. Society. Okay, Roy, how are you? I'm oh, just fine, Jerry. And what is your, your job here today? Uh, just to take part in a fellowship and visit people and receive them, and because I'm one of the old-timers from Canton here. Okay, how many people are, are listed in them? How many families do you know, Tilly? I have no idea to the exact number, but I know it's probably two to three hundred. That's very good. How long was the book in the making? Four years. Four years. Of hard work. And it's finally come yeah. a reality. Yes, it has. Okay, I imagine you're all pretty proud We're of it. We're really excited. <laughs> good. You're expecting a big crowd. You're going for another couple hours here today. We're going to go until six o'clock tonight. Good. Okay. Everett, nice to have you up from Florida. Nice Enjoy the book. Thank you. And Roy, hope to see you around. No, I'll be around. <laughs> okay. For What's Going On, this is Jerry Walter. We have with us four of the Artley sisters, originally from Canton, still part of Canton, as I understand. Is that right? I live in Belleville now. Okay, you're living in Belleville now, which you're originally from Canton. Right. Okay, I understand that there were originally ten of you. Yes, right. Okay, now who do we have with us? I'm Mildred. Okay, and you I'm are? I'm Cora. 
Hi, Cora. Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Marie. Hi, Marie. Are you excited about the book? Yes. 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 Did you did you each buy one? Yes. Yes. Good. Now I understand that you're actually part of the book. Yes. Yes, yes we are. Uh, she come and interviewed us at our house, at my house, and my brother was living there. One brother. Okay. Now there's four of you here. How many of the ten are, are still with? Just the four. Just the four of you. That's yes, six are deceased. Okay. You know, how far back does that book go? Can you tell me a little about that? something. Yes, early 1800s. The early 1800s, it follows yes. it back. Yes. Okay, that's real good. I'm glad that you're excited about the book. If you want one, we're going to have some information for you later in this little piece of how you can order your copy of Cornerstones, The History of Canton Families. For What's Going On, I'm Jerry Walter. Travel to foreign lands, discovering mysterious and exotic new places. A dream many Americans will have to postpone this year as the dollar loses its punch abroad. But now there's a trend in stores across America that allows people to experience other cultures without long air flights and upset stomachs. Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, and J.C. Penney, to name just a few, have all celebrated countries in their stores. The trend started in Dallas, Texas over three decades ago when Stanley Marcus of Neiman Marcus celebrated France in his one specialty store. Marvin Traub of Bloomingdale's took this idea and expanded it to a 16-store international extravaganza. What our country promotions uh, do for us is allow us to expose the store, our merchandise, and a country to the American markets. What started in Dallas is coming home to Dallas as J.C. Penney celebrates India in over 700 stores nationwide from their new headquarters. We're very excited about this promotion, uh, which will be in, during the month of May in 715 of our largest stores. And we're bringing the country of India to the American people. It's a beautiful country, rich with tradition, uh, rich with beautiful merchandise of cotton, and we'll have merchandise in women's and men's and children's and home furnishings in these stores. J.C. Penney's Expedition India is uh, a unique promotion in that its dimensions are so staggering. There have been other India promotions held overseas, but nothing quite the size and dimension, nothing of this range that was going to reach people in America at all levels, in many small towns, People are going to get, for the first time, an opportunity to buy handicraft items from India, and that's very exciting. Cookbooks, address books, photo essays, and even videotapes of imaginary trips are spin-offs of these celebrations. So if you don't plan to venture beyond your own backyard this year, call your travel agent and book a quick trip to the mall. Hi, we're back and Community Forum. We're talking with Joan Palmer of the Canton Historical Society and Diane Wilson, the author of Cornerstones, The History of Canton Families. And before we get back to talk, I want to explain the little piece that w you saw there. Um, of course, I was in my casuals. It was Saturday <laughs> afternoon, but I... Uh, put it together for a different show called What's Going On. And that's why, you, you, if you caught it, I said, uh, for what's going on. But that's the reason for that. But it fits so perfectly, we'll show it to you. Um, 
what, Dan, what other benefits came from developing the book? Uh, as far as the museum is concerned, did you were you able to to find other artifacts? Um, how did people cooperate? Yes, well, as we talked to so many people and they went through their old things, they began to donate many of their treasures to the historical society and to the museum. And uh, also, as they shared their family histories, that information has gone into the archives of the museum. So anyone who is interested in investigating their family genealogy, and if they have uh, family ancestors in Canton, they will be able to go to the Canton Museum and go through those family records. That's great. And people. Uh, donated several lovely old photographs to the museum and just on Saturday Joan received a set of spoons uh, coin silver from um, um, a woman who is a descendant of the Kenyon family and uh, a Kenyan man Orrin Kenyon married uh, Roxanne Fairman who was another old family in Ken. And we have uh, these spoons with the name Fairman and the name Kenyon. I imagine they Which are old. their, oh, they have to be very old. And uh, we were really pleased with that. And we also received uh, a daguerreotype uh, pictures and albums uh, from that family with, uh, uh, those are real treasures. Now, some of the stuff that you brought with you tonight, um, the daguerreotype, which one is that? No, that's, that's the small one. Okay, the picture frames. Yes. Okay. And that uh, has no. a mirrored effect and mm -hmm. was uh, popular around 1838. Now, that was an item that was donated during the... That was donated. Mm -hmm. That was great. Mm -hmm. Because of our contact with them and writing this book. So they're cleaning out their attics looking for <laughs> looking for <laughs> information and, and, and say, well, hey. don't throw anything away. <laughs> Donate it to the historical museum. Well, we, you know, appreciate anything like that. Now, anything. Getting back to people donated a lot within the past four years, is that schoolhouse getting a bit small? I mean, is it getting crowded in there or? Well, it's staying the same size. It's just getting More. filled up. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into they that one. <laughs> did add on to the building. I, I, okay. sh I should tell you that. I wrote this down, too, that uh, the, um, the school was built in 1884. And in the early 1930s, they added on a furnace room and two lavatories. That replaced the two outhouses and the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't grown since then. And it hasn't shrunk either. No. Mm -hmm. okay. And it stayed open a long time, that school did. Yes, it was. That school, Canton Center School, was the last one room schoolhouse in Wayne County. And when it closed its doors. And that was it. Yes, that was the end of the one-room schools now, when, in Wayne County. When did it become, when did it go from schoolhouse? Uh, I, don't I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I know that the Lions Club held their meetings there for a while, and the uh -huh. Republican uh, Club held their meetings there for a while. But then the, the Plymouth Canton Community Schools turned the building over to Canton Township. And as long as it is being used as a museum, it will stay, stay that way. Okay. If the museum were to move and um, you wanted to put a lawyer in there, wouldn't work. It would revert back to the school system. So I am sure it will always be a museum. Okay. Um, you mentioned, I'm curious now, you mentioned about these spoons, the Tillman no, family? Kenyon. Kenyon, I'm sorry. 
And what was the other family? Fairman. Okay. What, Diane, what would I read about those families in your book? Well, you would read that they were two very early families to come to the area, that they both really thrived in this area. Um, they prospered. And probably one of our most intriguing stories in the book is about... Um, Roxanna, who was a fairman and married a Kenyan, and they became the parents of several sons, and uh, four of the sons died as very little boys. And according to an old Kenyan family story, at least two of those boys died under very tragic circumstances. Their mother, Roxanna, um, one night when they were ill, got up in the middle of the night and we have to remember it was a time when there was no electricity and it was not an easy thing to get a light in the house in the middle of the night and she gave them what she thought was medicine and she was actually giving them a horse medicine which poisoned them oh and two of the boys died and uh, she was very affected by that for years her uh, descendants told the story that after that happened that she never smiled again and that she walked to the cemetery where they were buried every day for the rest of her life to visit the graves of her sons and they were buried in the Kenyon Cemetery which was named after the family. That's, that's spooky. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, tragic. Li yeah, tragic. And, yeah, um, Family, the, I'm getting the impression that years ago, Canton was, this area is such and such a family, and this area, was it like that from what you can, you know, from your, from your uh, explorations and, you know, your book writing? Was it, was it like a territorial community? where if you cross Canton Center Road, you're, you're with the Smith family, and, <laughs> you know, were there family boundaries? Well, the families were very influential in their neighborhoods, I'm sure, but I think that the focal point of neighborhoods were the one-room schoolhouses. Mm -hmm. um, there were two, two major areas, and that's Yeah, there Cherry were two Hill small villages. Shelton. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they weren't broken down like the, like, you know, the family. They all, in, they, they married into all the families. That's, so just to me, the fascinating part of all of this is yeah, you could how see it. They, they are. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. see it when you were um, researching it and writing uh -huh. it and, and uh, reading it, proofreading it. You can yeah. see and how. Reading it again. Yeah, <laughs> and then again. Yeah, I think that most families, the families who, married into who have been there. here for, you know, 150 years, are related to each other in one way or another. Wow. Sometime over that time period, they have intermarried. Second and third cousins. Yes, and there are many, many people who are cousins to each other in this township. Okay. Once again, I want to remind you, viewers that we are live and feel free to call us up. Our phone number is 459-7391. If you have questions, uh, leave your phone number. If we can't answer them on the air, uh, we'll get you an answer. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the museum. Joan, can you give me a verbal tour of the museum? I was in there the other day on Saturday for just about 10 seconds and I saw, I walked in, there was a showcase and there was a little table and that's about all I saw because I was in a hurry. I was well, when you walk, you walk in the front door and you're in the, the vestibule and it used to be on either side of you, you would go through a door into the cloak rooms, the boys on one side and the girls on the other. And uh, then you go on into the one main room. And it's been kept uh, the atmosphere of a schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you I have that feeling when you walk in that you still are walking into a schoolhouse. They've, uh, the Historical Society has added uh, the glass cabinets and 
showcases, but that's to keep some of the more valuable things under lock right. and key. Um, they have a, a red coffee grinder that came from the Windsor General Store in Sheldon and from Cherry Hills West Brothers or West General Store they have a um, glass small glass display case mm -hmm. so from each community there you can find lots from Sheldon and lots from Cherry Hill in there and they have children's toys and uh, clothing and uh, lots of pictures and maps and um, outside there's a, um, a tool old tools on no, display. I noticed also out in back there they have the uh, the canopy and there I believe there's a, a lot of farm equipment out yes, there. Yes, that's yeah, the tools, back, the farm yeah. tools. Mm -hmm. And right out front, what is it, a wagon or right out in front of the schoolhouse there on the lawn? Is a wagon. Yeah, okay. Now, of course, it's not going, it's not like going to Greenfield Village or Henry Ford Museum mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. by any means, but if you're interested in the history of Canton, you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's okay. a lot there to learn. Got a good one for you. How did Canton get its name? <laughs> where do you come up with a name like Canton? I mean, well, for that matter, where do you come up with a name like Dearborn or Detroit? Well, you yeah, know? But, that's right. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's, speculation. there's more right. than one theory. Okay. Well, what, what is one, one of the theories? Well, my personal favorite is <laughs> <laughs> that when communities were being named and they really had to choose a formal name when they wanted a post office, uh -huh. that the uh, government encouraged them to choose an unusual name so that there wouldn't be confusion if there were duplicate names, mail could get sent to the wrong place. So I think that... This must have been before there were zip codes. <laughs> yes. Long before <laughs> Long there were zip before codes. Long before zip codes. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think that Canton and, for instance, Nankin decided to choose uh, Chinese names because they thought they were so unusual. But Canton, as it turned out, is not a particularly unusual name. There are several Cantons across the United States. But now, I, it, you mentioned Chinese. Is Canton a Chinese word? Yes. yes. I, it's I, a I city in that. China. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. So I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> so it's not that unusual. There are a lot of Cantons. No, there's even a Canton as close as Ohio. And Canton must have had a post office back in the 1830s because, um, thanks to Bob Paget we have copies of letters that were mailed from England in the 1830s wow. addressed to uh, the whether it be the Suget family or the Paget family um, Canton Wayne County Michigan wow. and they received them I mean, mm -hmm. that was back it. when there were no uh, real roads uh -huh. and, and that they found this letter or many letters found their way to Canton. Now when when was it formerly established? As a township? Uh -huh. 1834. And this was dated back to 18... I think we have one in the museum that's 1836 and there's wow. one in the book uh, reproduced in the 1830s. Another picture in the book. Well <laughs> <laughs> In a it's way. a picture of a letter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um. If I was interested in helping out the historical society or the museum, how could I get involved? I want to tell the viewers if they're interested in the history of Canton, how can they get involved? Oh well, uh, the meetings every the. Um, The Board of Trustees meets every fourth Monday of the month, mm -hmm. and anybody's welcome to come to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the meetings are on the, the second Thursday of every month. They, um, they can contact Tilly Schultz. Mm -hmm. 
There are membership uh, applications at the museum. We're always looking for new members. Are you short on help right now for the museum or? I mean, as far as somebody... For volunteer me, help? Yeah. It's well, all volunteer. Uh -huh. All volunteer. Now, what hours is the museum open? Is it basically on the weekends? Tuesday or? from 1 to 4. Uh-huh. And Saturday from 1 to 4. So it's not open on and Sunday at all? And Dorothy uh, West is there, and Ruth Wiles uh -huh. is there on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Okay. And if anyone wants to tour the museum, uh, or wants a group to tour the museum, they can call and make uh, an appointment. Now, who would they And there's a, there's a telephone number for the Historical Museum. That's listed in the telephone book. Mm -hmm. uh, now they, if we do have a telephone number. Okay, but now if, if somebody's not there, is there an answering machine or a message, do you know? Or? Well, well of course, you can always contact City Hall. It's right next door. Right. The and clerk. if they want to tour, they can contact Dorothy West. Uh -huh. She makes the arrangements for the tours. And that's um, that's been done. Schools. Uh, Cub Scouts. Yeah. Yeah. The the elementary schools. You know, a teacher brings a, a, one class is enough at a time. Now, in your explorations, what should I call it? Explorations or research? Research. Mm -hmm. That's the word I want. <laughs> Um, you mentioned Nankin. Um, is Nankin Mills at what Nankin are you referring to? Yeah, Nankin was a township that was just next to Canton Township, and it, it basically became the city of Westland. Okay, part yeah, of that's it became Garden City. See, I thought it was mm -hmm. Nankin Mills. Mm -hmm. Well, there was that was part Nankin of it. Mills. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there, there was, was two. No, there was. There still is, I think. It's called Nankin Mills. Yeah, Nankin Mills yeah. is right mm -hmm. there at uh, Ann, Arbor, Ann Arbor Trail yeah. and uh, Farmington Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that it probably is in But there the was a Nankin, Nankin without the mills. A, a Nankin Township. And Township. And Nankin okay. Mills was a small settlement. Oh, okay. Now, the settlements, now you said there was, in Canton, there was Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill and Sheldon, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that was two different... Yes, Sheldon was, Sheldon was located on Michigan Avenue, which was known as the Old Chicago Road. And it was a very early road. It was first surveyed in 1825, and it was the main route, the only route, between Detroit and Chicago. And uh, it brought pioneers across the southern part of the state and so a lot of people came directly through Canton while they were headed west and a lot of them just decided to stay here. Now I know my, uh, my whoops, there goes my <laughs> book. Um, I know that, that, you know, my parents, I can remember, we had, we grew up in Dearborn and uh, we had relatives in just outside of Chicago and I can remember my mom and dad talking how they took Michigan Avenue uh, mm -hmm. to before Chicago I before I-94 <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> was even thought of, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they traveled the old roads, took them two, three days to get to mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, of course, I don't think it went back as far as the Sheldon settlement, or Cherry Hill, was it, on Michigan? Sheldon, Sheldon. is on Michigan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think it went back that far. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember they telling me, you know, Oh, we used to take Michigan Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very well-traveled <laughs> road for yeah. many, many years. Well, um, settlements like that along the main routes take uh, the city of Novi. Um, I know f that Novi was given its name because it was, I believe, a stagecoach stop, and it was number six. And they wrote it N O in a Roman numeral six. And when they gave the town its name, they just turned the Roman numeral six into V I and called it Nova. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you know, mm -hmm. so but that that's you know, it's what else can you tell us about your book? We only got a few minutes left. What do you want to tell us about your book? Well, I think it would be well worth anyone's investigation if they are at all interested in Canton, this is really the way to find out 
how it started, what, what its roots are. It really gives a picture of a completely different way of life when things were much quieter here. More, more unlike the Ford Road we have today. Yes, yes. Now, I, when, when people say well, to me, Canton, I think Ford Road Strip, you know, from 275 of White Castles, you know, <laughs> down, down to uh, Myers. Mm -hmm. Well, Ford Road used to end at Myers. Okay. It never went, uh, it, it dead ended there at Canton Center Road. It wasn't until um, the 1920s that they mm -hmm. started, that mm -hmm. they extended Productive. Ford Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is interesting, yeah. and w there's a picture of that in the book. Uh -huh. And we have a picture in the book of the corner of Haggerty and Ford Road, and you know what a busy, busy yeah, intersection that is you now. You've got, what is it, Knights in there, you've got mm -hmm. White Bob mm -hmm. Evans. Mm -hmm. And the 275, White, 275 is there. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a photograph in here that shows when it was all country field. Do you know where it's at in the book? <laughs> <laughs> Can we find it? <laughs> Real quick. Red section. <laughs> For the people that know Canton of today. It's got to be about 15 or 16, isn't it? We're going to try and find uh, Canton. You should have warned us. Yeah. I, well, it's... <laughs> but now, I saw a picture of the same type of situation out on Nine Mile Road. I was, I was um, out visiting in that area, and I saw a photograph that was taken, I don't know how it was taken, it was taken from the air, or maybe it was an artist's rendition, of the same area where this building now sits in mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. okay, here we have. Well, we've got first Federalist today. <laughs> oh, okay, we have, <laughs> all right, I'm looking at the bottom picture, okay, <laughs> on August 30th, 1923, the corner of Artley and Ford Road. Now, Artley, is that the family, it Artley? Was, it was renamed yes. to Haggerty Road, and that is the It used to be known Artley as Artley. Family. Well, the Artley family is the people right. that we had. Mm -hmm. in the, there was mm -hmm. 10 of them there. Mm -hmm. uh, Ford Road looks east, now intersection of Haggerty Road and Ford Roads, and Haggerty Roads, 1988. That's... Uh, <laughs> isn't that fantastic? It's amazing, isn't there's, it? Uh, there's a signpost there. <laughs> and... Uh, that's that's fantastic. That's uh, 1923. It's about 155 years, 165 years. That's oh, it's scary. Where are we going to be in another 150, <laughs> you know, 150 change. years? Where are we going to be? You know. No, this was maybe 55 years. This was yeah. 55 oh, was that nine? I'm sorry, 19. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the 18. Yeah. No. That's still oh. a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we going to be in another 50 years? Yeah. You know. They're going to have monorails going down Ford Road. We might. We just might. We might. Well, there used to be an inner urban on Michigan Avenue, and that, that's a place that's really changed to Shelby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any last comments? No, it was just a, it was a fun four years. It, was. it really was. <laughs> and I think it's well worth it. But now you got to sell the books. <laughs> that's right. Now we want to sell the books. Canton residents, help them out. It's a non-profit venture, is that right? That's right. That's absolutely non-profit venture. If you're interested in the history of Canton in any way, invest in a copy of the book. Leave it in the attic for your kids to look at 100 years from now. <laughs> your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, put it in a plastic bag and just put it away. You don't, oh, you know. And people, there's a map at the beginning of each chapter. They can find out right where they lived, who used to live there, and who was the land grant owner that's, of that piece of property. That's great. We're out of time. I want to thank Diane, Wilson, and Joan. Palmer. Palmer. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it was right there. <coughs> For our community forum, I'm Jerry Walter. Join us again next week.